If you love the night sky as I do, the sky of billions and billions of stars and galaxies and planets, you want to photograph it. That's not the easiest thing to do, since photographing the night sky presents the biggest problem of all in photography. Where is the light? Without light, cameras don't work well, unless you know a few tricks. This video gives you an idea of just how to compensate for the lack of light and the other difficulties of night sky photography. And it lets the camera see the night sky better than you do. All you need are some basic photographic tools, most of which you most likely have, so you can do this very cheaply. I'll show you examples of simple night sky photography and explain how I took those photographs. We have to face the fact that getting really great close-up photographs of the night sky involves obtaining equipment costing thousands and even hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's not what this video is about. In it, you'll find out how to take simple photographs with your Sony A6100 or any other Sony camera in the A6000 series using a couple of very basic lenses, the Sony 50mm f1.8 and the Sigma 19mm f2.8. Both of these lenses are fast, which helps you open your camera's eyes and get around that basic problem of the lack of light. Both lenses will reveal more than your unaided vision can. I'll show you how to take the easiest of all photographs of the night sky Photographs that expose the billions and billions of glorious, gorgeous stars above our heads that our eyes simply can't see. Photographs that let us explore the universe with our imaginations. The best night sky is above our heads. Where else would it be? One tip to get the most out of your simple setup is to point the lens straight up as shown in this photo. With the A6100 on a tripod, simply tip the lens upward on a 90 degree angle. This allows you two advantages. One, the sky directly above your head is darkest, since most light pollution is on the horizons. Two, the atmosphere is thinnest directly overhead, since you don't have to shoot on an angle toward the horizon, which increases the distance between your camera and the upper edge of the atmosphere. Those two things make for a better photo. With the lens tilted at a 90 degree angle, also tilt back the LCD screen so you have some idea of what you're shooting. Focus in the LCD screen. Use manual focus to make the stars look bright and clear. Pull back slightly from infinity focus. Next, use a lens hood for the least exposure to ambient light and add a cable release and the two second timer for the steadiest shots. With the tripod cable release and two second timer, you'll get the least shake possible and the sharpest photos. Be prepared to shoot in the dark. In fact, choose the darkest night of the month, which is the new moon. It must be a clear night or don't even bother. Don't try to mount your camera on the tripod and put in the cable release when you're outside, which was what I was trying to do here. You're practically blinded by the lack of light. Set up your rig before you go outside, as shown in the previous photos. You can use light from your cell phone to see what you're doing in a pinch. Also, choose your basic settings inside, because once outside at night, with the lens pointed to the sky, you can't use the viewfinder since it's pointing at the ground and it's hard to fiddle with the control wheels. I select manual on the mode dial and then either F1.8 on the Sony 50mm or F2.8 on the Sigma 19mm lens. For a shutter speed, I use 6 seconds as a beginning point. Shutter speed may change with the effect you want, as you'll see later in the photos. For creative style, I use standard and crank the saturation up to three to give the darkest dark and the brightest stars in their greatest number. I find increasing saturation is extremely important. 
you can try an ISO anywhere between 400 and 1600. Also, set that before you go out. In this video, I used mostly ISO 1600, but got some great results with ISO 400. Wow, talk about a frame full of stars. This one has thousands of them or more. It's shot at 10 seconds at f1.8 and 400 ISO. It seems to have lots of noise, or maybe it's just hard to get any depth of field with stars that fade away for trillions of miles. Let's slow down the shutter speed and see what happens next. So with this photo, I slowed the shutter speed to eight seconds. There is a slight improvement with noise, but you still see plenty of distant stars shedding light from billions of years ago. The f-stop is still f1.8, and we're still at 400 ISO. See if you can find what appears to be a tiny red giant in the frame. With this next photo, I made more of a jump down to five seconds for the shutter speed, and you see that some of the noise is less while there are still too many stars in the frame to count. Your imagination could run wild speculating just what's happening in and around these stars, but it's fun just to stare at this photo and let your thoughts run away with you. There are several of what appear to be binary stars. See if you can find them too. I wanted to see what would happen if I kept the shutter at five seconds and the f-stop at f1.8 and raise the ISO to 1600. You get this amazing photo. It appears there is nowhere in the frame that there isn't a star, as raising the ISO brought out even more of them. This might seem overexposed for the night sky, but it's great for informing yourself as to how many stars there are beyond our world and making us feel very, very small. Is there anyone out there? How could there not be? To darken the exposure a little, I jumped down to eight seconds in this photo while keeping the other settings the same. In the lower left, something streaked through the sky and left a line, perhaps a satellite or a spaceship. Let your imagination run wild again. I wanted to darken the skies further in this next photo, so I went down to four seconds with the same settings. This exposure still has those billions and billions of stars, and it's not much different from the previous two, so I took the shutter speed down once again. At two second shutter speed, we have a much darker photo than the first one in this series, and one that's closer to the correct exposure. There are still too many stars to look at, so don't even try. Just dream away about what's out there. A wild thing happened when I switched lenses to the Sigma 19mm f2.8, and this photo shows you just what it was. All of a sudden, the wide-angle lens let in far more light at 1600 ISO, even though it was a slower f-stop. It shot at 8 seconds, comparable to the previous photos with the 50mm f1.8, but look how much brighter the sky is. It's almost daylight, and it has a lot of noise. So I jumped the shutter speed down to 2 seconds and got this photo. The quality really suffered and the noise is all over the place. Let's move on from it by bumping the shutter speed down again. This photo is shot at one second, which still hasn't calmed down the noise, but it has reduced it. I was beginning to think it was a bad idea, switching lenses. When I bump the shutter speed down to 0.8 seconds in this photo, some of the noise finally disappeared, although many of the stars have receded into the darkness. You get a better photo. 
Finally, at one half second at f 2.8 ISO 1600 with a 19 millimeter lens, you get a prettier picture of the night sky. You then don't get those billions and billions of stars as you did in the earlier photos, but you do get a nice calming photo of the awe-inspiring night sky. What can you take away from my experiences with these two lenses and these techniques for revealing the night sky on a budget? I think the photographs speak for themselves and give you plenty to muse about and wonder about. I'm going to try more combinations of lenses and settings, but for now I think we can say that a wide angle lens lets in more light, but a faster lens, even though longer, shows more stars with better quality. I didn't try the 19 millimeter lens at a lower ISO, but I think I should. It was a failing on my part. I just wanted to see what happens, and maybe you should too, because at a lower ISO, you might get better results than I did. If you want a landscape photo with the Milky Way lower on the horizon, I think you might go with a wide angle. It depends on the conditions. For now, shooting the night sky straight up reveals far more than the naked eye does and gives you plenty to look at and contemplate. Good night. I hope you try these methods and thank you. <music>